every single drone manufacturer has gone out of business, except Dragonfly. We're the only North American manufacturer that has a full product line. The expected drone relevance on a battlefield is 10 days. We were delivering insulin in Ukraine into besieged cities. That's our experience and our commitment that, that's winning this game for us. Hey everybody, welcome back. My next guest is Cam Chell. He's the CEO and founder of Dragonfly, trading on the CSE and the symbol DPRO, and the same symbol in the United States, Cam. Welcome. Thanks, James. Really glad to be here. Quickly give us an overview of how Canadian company gets to be the service provider to the U.S. military of drones. Dragonfly itself is, we're, we're a 27-year-old drone manufacturer. In fact, we're the original original drone manufacturer. And uh, most people uh, don't realize that that drones, we didn't call them drones back then. We called them flying cameras. And um, that was a, it's a Canadian invention. Uh, or a Canadian innovation is probably a better way to put it. And, um, and so, uh, and in fact, I, I learned a, a few weeks ago, uh, when I was at a, uh, at the T-Rex event, which is the invite only army, uh, event, um, uh, for experimental, uh, equipment that, uh, a gentleman came up to me and he told me the story about the first flying camera that the U S Navy ever bought what, what, a flying camera is a drone. Again, it just wasn't called that back then. And it was a dragonfly drone. Uh, and I, I, I didn't re- and it was a mail order, uh, thing. And, and, uh, they bought it after they saw us on the cover of popular science. We were innovation of the year on uh, pop, you know, this is back when there were magazines and, you know, stuff. So, uh, so we've been around a long time and we have a long history. It's, it's not a huge history in terms of like sizes of orders and dollars and things like that, but it's, a, but it's a pretty deep history with lots of organizations, including parts of, uh, the U S military, uh, where we've been fortunate enough to be, uh, innovative and worked a long time with them. So, uh, this is a relationship that goes back. These are relationships, excuse me, that go back years and years, uh, far before tariff wars and trade wars and, you know, all of that type of stuff. And we've had a U.S. presence for that time. In fact, every Every North American drone manufacturer in the last 27 years, except for this latest wave of drone manufacturers in the States for the last five or six years, but previous that, every single drone manufacturer has gone out of business. Every single one of them, except Dragonfly. And, you know, we survived uh, because we took a bit of a different strategy uh, than what the typical North American drone manufacturers were doing. And we were really focused on, you know, a few public safety clients that were very loyal to us and and North American, you know, kind of U.S. Canada built product, uh, which was more expensive uh, than the Chinese product that was flooding the market. And uh, and we did a lot of uh, contract engineering work for the military primes like aero environment general atomic and things like that so uh so i think it you, you know the, the fact that we've been working there so long has afforded us the luxury and the privilege uh to be of service and and understand uh how to service that particular customer uh as well as as anybody else so uh but it is a big deal that it that a uh, a canadian-based company with very strong and deep ties into the u.s and operations there um i uh has been able to um successfully get orders and and work in a trusted relationship so i've got to assume that there was a competitive process to achieve that contract oh yeah so i i mean uh this this particular order uh was close to two years in the making uh and it included um everything not just from field testing and design work but uh you know on-site audits of our facilities uh you know uh, uh clearance of uh personnel uh capacity capabilities um yeah, even before the order was uh, even but even before you could get in the mix of this thing you had to demonstrate a significant capability to manage logistics handle volumes uh, you know, redundancy in your systems, uh, security, all the rest of it. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of folks that are now thinking the drone business is a great business to be in. And I've, I've seen this wave six or seven times over the years. Oh, let's get in the drone business. And, and, and candidly, when I first got into it, that's what I thought too. And, uh, and, and it has been an incredible grind and a slog and I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, but you, you know, putting something up in the air, especially in a, in a, a defense environment, but any environment, putting something up in the air isn't a matter of, you know, getting some wings and some propellers. The, 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 the technology is, uh, you you know, to be able to do that safely and on scale and in a regulated, regulated environment, the barriers of entry to get in seem, seem low, uh, some good ideas and, and a little bit of money, but the barriers to success are enormous. 
And that's why I believe that if, if an organization isn't well established with those customers uh, today, they're, they likely miss the cycle. Sure. Um, your drones are not uh, for specifically combat purposes. From what I've seen, they seem to be focused on supply chain. And is that, is that a section of the drone market that you plan to focus on and stay stay focused on or is the combat applications for drone technology also a direction that you can see yourself going in yeah so um our drones are uh, they're dual use so we specifically design them to be used in commercial environments and military environments uh and that helps keep our our cost down our supply chain uh you, you, you know uh, ubiquitous and such. And so th that's a really important aspect of where departments of defense around the world are moving toward, um, you know, sole purpose only military equipment is really expensive. It's hard to procure and it, and it generally doesn't move as, uh, as quickly through the mission requirement, uh, or changing mission requirement. Um, so, uh, we have a pretty strong history, um, in logistics on the commercial side. Uh, this last year, we announced that, um, the Department of, uh, Transportation in Massachusetts, uh, down selected us to be one of uh, likely only two companies that will have delivery licenses in Massachusetts. Uh, we received waivers to operate our equipment over top of people and over top of moving vehicles. We were selected by uh, Mass General uh, to be their uh, drone logistics uh, partner, uh, which basically means that we're, we build and manage their drone delivery program. So, you know, from their main hospital in Boston, they've got over 1,200 clinics that they service where they've got to deliver things like test results, pharmaceuticals, uh, prescriptions, you name it. And and right now they're done by vans through incredible traffic jam. So they're moving to an air logistics uh, platform, uh, which they've selected us to build out. So when you take that expertise and then you and then you couple it with things like in 2022, we were delivering insulin in Ukraine into besieged cities. We put our boots on the ground in there. And so we've, we've got that type of hardened experience as well in really tough environments uh, with with beyond mission critical um, uh, um, in, imperative uh, that we've all we've also have experience doing as operators, but also put our equipment through. And so when you start combining that uh, those types of experiences uh, and the fact that in general, like um, our, our we're the only North American manufacturer that has a full product line. So if you look at the other comps out there, which are great company, uh, they'll have a product, maybe two, and they're generally going to be the smaller drone that um, you know that would compete against the DJI Chinese product, you know the Mavics and the, the things like that. And they're generally used for surveillance. They're flying cameras for the most part, um, and uh, it's a highly competitive market. And and the Chinese have done a great job of creating a customer expectation that's really exceedingly high. Um, so we tend not to focus there. Uh, we tend to focus more on uh, the heavier lift drones um, uh, or drones that just have a lot more battery capacity or power plant capacity. And so, uh, you, you know, ISR is a, an important, you know, mapping surveillance, ISR, uh, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance is an important part of the drone industry. Um, it it, it, it's probably dwarfed by logistics. Now, when you're building logistics drones, you also have heavy capacity, payload capacity and battery capacity to also run uh, defensive um, tactical systems on it. So, you know, so we see our customers moving our systems in that direction uh, of both logistics and uh, tactical defense. Sure. So you're, you know, I look at I look at the drone market, which I do follow somewhat closely because I have touch points with it in in various unintuitive capacities. And so I look at where you're at, and for me, the comp is uh, Anduril, which is you know thirty thirty billion pre IPO private company, but that's the valuation they they did their last round at. And to what extent? Is there crossover in competition with Anduril and what are the opportunities for Dragonfly that might actually displace Anduril in the competition for business from the military going forward? Yeah, well, you know, Anduril might disagree with what I'm about to say, but they are they're a military contractor. And so they are building bu building military systems that by comparison to, say, like the Lockheeds or the Boeings, they're innovating more quickly and, and they're coming in at lower costs. However, they are they are still in that very heavy procurement cycle. So their systems are priced and targeted at much more uh, 
at much larger what are called programs than where than where we focus. So uh, we're selling our product definitely I- into the, what's called the programs, uh, but the decisions for the pr- our products can be made now down at what they call the O6 level, so even b- below a command level. And uh, that's because we're very tactical and we're boots on the ground uh, with folks. Now we integrate with Android type systems um, because we're providing information into the larger you know, things that they're building, but we don't have any direct competitive products, uh, with an Android. We're, we're in a bit of a different subsection, uh, than where they, uh, where they're playing. And of course they're doing everything now from submarines to, you, you know, you, you name it. Um, so, uh, but the, but the Android comp is, is important to note because it, it is the, uh, the signifier of how the procurement cycles globally now have changed. Uh, the the expected drone relevance on a battlefield is 10 days. Every 10 days, the technology upgrades. Every 10 days, your drone is out of date. It, you put that thing up, it's coming down because there's a way to defend against it. There's a way to take it out, or you're about to get hit with something that is completely new that didn't exist 10 days ago. And so this uh, army order that we just got is the first representative order of how the DO, to my knowledge anyway, and certainly what we've been indicated to us, is that this is the first representative order and partnership where you've got somebody actually involved in that iteration process. So I believe that we were able to achieve this order, not just because of a great product, but because of how we work together to iterate that product every 10 days. So, you know, we're training them on how to build manufacturing plants and how to build Dragonfly drones in those manufacturing plants and how to iterate based on use case or concepts of operations every 10 days. They, they, there's not time for them to come back and give us a different order and go through a procurement and us test it. And dude, they're like, it's they're putting it out there tomorrow. So they've got to do those modifications. So whether they have the tools that they need or the tooling equipment that they need that we use to build our stuff, like that's the level of integration that we see the Department of uh, War and other uh, departments of defense now moving toward. So they're buying your process as much as they're buying your hardware. Yeah. It's, okay. it's our it's our experience and our commitment that that's winning this game for us right now. All right, Cam, we're going to leave it there for now. There's so much we didn't get to talk about that we will in the future. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. And sorry for not being in my office. We're I'm out in the field today, so uh, I just couldn't get back to where we're staying in time. So I, I appreciate your time as always, James. You bet. It's all good. Thanks, Cam.